switching. I'm not going to say much about layer two because it's one of the most uninteresting layers of the network protocols. Uh, layer two is what we call switching layer. If you ever look at the back of even your home network device, which is a Wi-Fi unit, or, or even the device your ISP will leave at your house to terminate to a DSL network, if you look at the back, there'll be a bank of five or four or eight ports, network ports. One of them will say internet on it, and then there'll be four more, right? That's your switch. Um, that's called your, your switch layer, okay? That's your, your middle layer. Um, also, I want to talk a little bit about cabling with the switch layer, okay? Your switching layer. Your, uh, now, what happens here is interesting. Your switch will either run at 100 megahertz or one giga, gigahertz, or gigabit. 100 megabit or a thousand uh, uh, a gigabit, which is a thousand uh, megabits. Uh, they they do have network cards out for PCs now that are 10,000 gigabits or 10 gigabits, which is 10,000 megabits. Very very fast stuff. The 10 megabit um, standard was patented by Cisco, so anyone using that and using their tech to do it has to pay them a royalty. I'm just saying. And the 40, 40 gigabits is also patented by Cisco. They did that three years ago. They were the first ones to the table. So your switching is mainly when you see those, uh, when you see those big data banks at your company or whatever, and they come in 48 port units. And they'll have four uplink ports. That's your middle layer, your middle networking layer. And there's a world of difference between a good switch and a crappy switch. So what happens when you hit a switch? Your computer is called a node. Anything, a uh, anything with, that, that can connect to a switch is called a node. For example, a printer will have a network card in it, either a Wi-Fi network card or an Ethernet network card that can plug into a switch. That's called a NIC or a node. Uh, physically, it's called a NIC, which is Network Interface Card. Um, in networking, we call it a node. Um, a node is anything with a MAC address. A MAC address is unique to every device. For example, your phone has two radios on it, uh, Wi-Fi 2.5 uh, megahertz and Wi-Fi 5 megahertz. Guess what? It has two nodes. It has two MAC addresses, one for each of those radios. If your computer has two network cards, it has two MAC addresses. If it has two network cards and a Wi-Fi card on your, your desktop PC, you have three MAC addresses. Anything with a MAC address is a node. If your TV has a Ethernet port and a Wi-Fi, it has two MAC addresses. If it just has Wi-Fi, it has one MAC address, that's one node, okay? So that's how it works. Anything with a MAC address is a network node. If you plug one switch into another switch, that other switch is also a network node on that central or core switch. Anything plugged into that switch is a node. Your phones can obviously connect to it through a Wi-Fi. Your TV can connect to it, your, your laptop, uh, your, your desktop, okay, your printer. You see a lot of printers. They plug them into uh, the switch directly. It has a network card in it, a NIC, and that makes it a node. It might have two. I've seen them with two. I've seen them with modems right in the printer, okay? So you can call your printer and print stuff from home. That's old school. It's all done through Ethernet now. Um, a lot of the home printers, and I've set up several of them for friends and family, they'll have Wi-Fi devices in them. It's still a node, it's, it's not Ethernet, it's Wi-Fi, but it does the same thing. It gives them an IP on that switch. That switch controls that IP pool, and it allows access. So when you attach to a switch with your, say, laptop, and you attach to a switch, the same switch with your printer, what that is called is a broadcast domain, which means that that laptop can see that printer and you can set it up in Windows as your printer now, okay? Because they're on the same broadcast domain.
That's switching. That's part of switching. Now, if I give it a different, say, IP or a different subnet on the printer than the desktop, they can't see each other anymore. But that's not from hardware. That's called logical. We separate networks two ways, logically and physically. Um, physically means uh, like a VLAN, and logically means with a different IP. Okay? So physically, that laptop could still see that printer, but they can't communicate because they're not on the same IP range, although they're using the same switch. If I just change the, the desktop to the, the printer network on the same IP or subnet range as the network, it can suddenly see it. Okay? It's now on the same broadcast. Now, another way to separate networks is what happens if, if you get an office full of people and they're all streaming and, and, and this sort of thing. What happens is your network gets kind of busy. So if there's one particular department that's always uploading to some server somewhere in the building or something like that, we separate them off into a broadcast domain. Uh, we, we, do this, we do this for several reasons. One, it might be for bandwidth, maybe they're just taking down the network. For security, okay, we don't want this network talking to this network. Um, and we don't want them to connect even if he changes his IP. So that's called VLANing, Virtual Local Area Network. Now, if you VLAN, you have to do it on an industrial layer two device, like a Cisco. The Cisco, Cisco Catalyst series switches can do this. They can separate VLANs. Depending on the, the software license that you have, the iOS software license, depends on how many VLANs you can make. So if you have a 48 port switch, you might want four, four VLANs, okay? Uh, who knows, one VLAN, three VLANs. Um, now, when you do that, even if you have the same IP on one VLAN as you do on another VLAN, those two nodes still can't see each other, okay? What the switch does when you configure a VLAN is it stops the electricity being shared, the electrical signal being shared from this port block to this port block. So you can have the same IP on each VLAN. It doesn't matter. The same internal IP. It won't matter. They, they can't see each other. They have to go outside of that switch and back in. There's only one way to do it, and that's to truncate a port, or it's called trunking. You take a port and you truncate it and you physically plug in. You, you trunk these two ports. You, you physically plug in uh, network cable to this port and then over to this port. Now those two VLANs can talk to each other, but only through that trunk. It's a good way to separate network traffic. What I use it for on enterprise is you use VLANing to, if you're using the same physical switches for your uh, IP phones as you are for your desktops, you want to, the IP phones, you want to get them off your network. You, wanna, you want them to be separate. You don't want them really bringing down your network performance in your internal office. I separate them. Actually, what I try and do is use se separate switches entirely, but if I can't and I have to put them on the same switch, I VLAN them off. It separates broadcast domains. So all that traffic isn't focused on one uh, domain or set of IPs. It's split up, and you don't get packet storms or anything like this. Uh, finally, I like to mention cabling, because when you're talking about switching, you are talking about cabling. Cabling for switching, I can't see it changing in the future. It's all copper, and it's Ethernet. Now, with CAT6 Ethernet, you can have 10 gigabits per second over copper. I don't know if you realize how fast that is. That's insanely fast. That's insanely fast. If you're, if you're talking about your internet connection, if that was over your internet connection, you could stream hundreds of videos simultaneously. No problem. No problem. Now, obviously your internet connection is, isn't even close to being that fast. So if you're streaming from one computer to the other, there's, there's no latency at all. It's super fast. Obviously most networks are gigabit. And I haven't seen it in a while, but they used to be, even you know, 10 years ago, most of them were 100 megabit. So now it's all gigabit. Now look for it to become 10 gigabit, okay? 
Now, it's all copper. It always will be. I mean, if you need fiber <laughs> to your computer, it's gonna be really expensive. And number two, I don't know of any network card that will take fiber right into your computer. It's all ethernet. Um, it's also expensive. Now, in 2001, in 2001, at a convention of some sort, I did see a 3M card that had two fibers going into it. They called it an F45 connector, and it was similar in size to a, 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 a RJ45 connector, the copper connectors you see now, but it had two fibers inside. It was amazing. I'm sure someone bought it up just to bury it. <laughs> but the, the copper that we use in networking is only for last mile or within the building. Yep. Or another reason we might use fiber is to avoid EMI, electrical magnetic interference. What happens when you take a copper wire and you run it to a switch across the room and that copper wire is going through lights, uh, maybe going past a motor, okay, the, the signal is going to be lost. The electrical magnetic interference is from the ballast on the light and the motor creates a mag magnetic field and it interferes with data over that cable. Uh, even with Wi-Fi, that's an issue. I was, in a, I was in a place once, okay, the Wi-Fi was up there and one guy was telling me, you know, it's one level up and we're on the ground floor. He's saying, you know, if I'm standing exactly right here for about three meters, I can't use the Wi-Fi here. And I went upstairs and I looked and the Wi-Fi was right where he was pointing. And he said, it's so close, but if you look at it, it's only about 20 feet and I still can't reach it. But what was in between him was several uh, incandescent lights and a motor. I can't remember what it was, a fan or something in the motor. And if he walked up past those electrical devices, he got perfect reception from Wi-Fi. So the EMI can even affect the Wi-Fi. The EMI can also affect hard, hard lines. This is why you can't run data cables near electrical equipment. I've done inspections at sites on projects where they were complaining to the corporation, oh, but uh, we followed your standard and the, the, you know, the, the network doesn't run very fast. And they have every one of their network cables running along with all of their power cables. Totally ridiculous. And not only that, it's running by devices and everything and they're wondering why they're only getting one megabit out of a gigabit connection over CAT5 or CAT6. It was all EMI and it was totally ridiculous. Um, with fiber, you don't get any EMI. You don't get attenuation either. So if you're talking CAT6, you can go up to 198 meters or 192 meters without, before the signal degrades. With fiber, you can go across the ocean and the signal won't degrade. They're just gonna go. That's how it's gonna work. With, with copper, there's attenuation over 192 meters. There's also EMI, which you don't get with fiber. So you get faster speeds with fiber, but expensive hardware. The, expensive, the, the hardware expense for fiber is part of the decision-making process, not just the speed. The, the fiber f equipment is not cheap. And setting up the lines and installing the lines, that's not cheap either. Uh, copper's cheaper, it's pretty quick. It just has to be set up right. Uh, finally, what I want to say about layer two is not much actually happens here. <laughs> it's the least exciting layer, other than say cabling and understanding broadcast domains. There's not a lot of work we do on the switch. Once the switch is set up with its VLANs, um, even if you change the IP, I mean, you don't really need to change that on the switch, not really. <laughs> you change that on the firewall and the router, which is the next layer that I want to talk talk about. Uh, layer three, routing and remote access. Subscriptions down below, arguments down below, questions, comments. I'll get to your questions, I'll get to your comments if I like them. If I don't, forget it. I'll just ignore you. <laughs>